Hi, so we are going live with a really cool person. And um, when I, Bobby Vidoshka, um, and when I discovered her, I was like, because I've been ranting on about bedroom to boardroom for sort of a few years and it all crosses over and it shouldn't be separated. And um, and then suddenly I came across Bobby and her book, here it is, Sexual Intelligence in Business. And so, oh my God, <laughs> that's what I think. That's what I've been shouting about. And um, just that you are, as an individual, your background, and we'll get into that more, um, totally diverse and you're an advocate and an entrepreneur author and co-founder of win for science it's, it's, that's getting young female scientists kind of staying in science as careers is that right um yeah. and um and yeah and the main thing we're gonna chat about is the sexual intelligence in business and what it is i've said it to a few people um that i was doing this talk with you um and the book and people are like well what is what is it what, what is sexual intelligence if it's so to get there um, I like people's stories, and I always find that, especially women in the sex industry, working in sex, there's always there's always a good story there as to how their personal kind of stories into and journey into getting into that world, um, because you've got to be pretty ballsy to then turn it into a bit of a career and a bit, and be outspoken, because you do get backlash, especially any woman talking about sex and you doing it in any kind of business. Um, setup is so yeah so how what what's your journey like how did you get to where you are um now to make you well, I mean you as do? so thank you so much um for inviting me to chat about this I think it's a really um important and relevant topic and um I guess I've just always sort of been a bit of a flirty sexual type of person and you know when you're younger um you know that's that's generally like an okay thing um, but then once you sort of get into the professional world, there's sort of this unwritten thing, like you got to calm that down um, a bit and be professional, right? And uh, um, I've never been one to like follow rules and stuff. So okay. I kind of just do like whatever I feel like doing anyway. Um, and so I was just, you know, continuing to be to be myself. And I always found that to be, you know, the most um, useful um, thing to do and easiest thing to do. But um and then I noticed um, after the Me Too movement that, you know, although what they were, um, you know, what they achieved from that is um, really important. Um, there was some sort of um, things happening as a result, what I call second order consequences that I don't think um, many, many people predicted is that now it became sort of people are a bit confused and apprehensive, um, you know, in business, building relationships is key. And, you know, if if I can't, you know, go for dinner with a with a male um, colleague or client or, um, you know, suddenly if we're in meetings and they feel compelled to keep the door open or have a third party <coughs> present because yeah. they're concerned about what might get said, um, you know, that that has an impact on, um, on it had an impact on me and it had an impact on, you know, women's advancement, generally speaking. And then I was just having all these individual conversations with all sorts of people at all sorts of levels. And everybody was kind of feeling the same thing. It's like, yeah, I can't even like I can't even I can't pay you a compliment if you look nice today because I'm afraid and and I can't say this and I can't say that. And what if I actually like that person? I'm afraid to approach them because, you know, then I could have a sexual harassment case on me, um, with male or female. Um, and, and so it just became like a bit like, uh, we're walking on eggshells and we don't know what to do. And I mean, it's sort of the boys club and, um, getting, you know, male, I mean, they are decision makers still for the most part and, you know, getting, breaking into the upper echelons and having those opportunities to, to um, you know, advance your business and advance your career was becoming a bit impeded, which then started to annoy the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah. So like, okay, this is a problem, people. We can't, we can't have this. So how, you know, the, the whole reaction, you know, business and corporate wise is just like, let's write a whole bunch of HR policies and sexual harassment policies and let's just, just shut the whole thing down. Um, so nobody say nothing to anybody about anything that has anything to do with love or sex, just like completely but try to look anyone like, in the eye, don't smile at anyone. Uh, just, yeah. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> because it could be misconstrued. And so then I felt like, okay, well, we have to continue some conversation um, about this and figure out, um, 
how to go about that. Then I realized, well, then I was getting a lot of questions like, well, how do we do that? Um, and so, so then I just kind of sat down and tried to formulate at least some kind of initial framework that people could start um, thinking about and, and figuring out where they fit in this so that they could start to maybe navigate these environments in a way that doesn't, um, you know, impede um, women's advancement or anyone's, you know, I mean, we spend a lot of most of our time at work and in business. And so if you can't meet people um, and, and build relationships, business or personal, then, you know, that's a, that's a major problem. Yeah, because you talk about the, um, the fourth thing, you know, the power, power, money, sex and love being the sort of the four is what drives us all. It's what is the core, you know, in, in everyone. And actually what what has always been is is that kind of actually the sex and love bit has to be separate from the power of money when it comes that's the that's the business place and the sex and love can't be there but actually if you want to get by at work and enjoy work and be good at work it's all about relationships so the personal comes into it so um but what have you on that kind of the second wave like the post me too what are the big things that jump out the the tricky the tricky parts or the bit where it's gone too far um and yeah what are what are your thoughts on how it needs to be fixed and using that using sexual energy um and intelligence <laughs> yeah um so like i said i think some of the hr policies have gone too far um and but i don't i don't see them retracting um that anytime soon i think the the biggest thing is is we need to start um um thinking about sexuality which i mean i know i'm preaching to the choir here but mm -hmm. in where women's sexuality is not a tool for ma manipulation and that you know there's a lot of man bashing um going on right now which i also i'm not a fan of um i think that we need to be really patient in the education of ourselves and the learning of how to navigate this environment um it it won't happen overnight and so um you know we we have to try to be gracious in our in our teachings in our learning you know if someone is going to approach you say at work and they want to ask you out if you don't like them just because they've hit on you or asked you out doesn't make them a creepy person you know it's you could just say no like politely like there's a there's a way to sort of um get around that without going straight to um straight to like thinking okay this this guy if i if i say no to him he's going to start sexually harassing me um, cause I, I, I just know too many really great men, um, to think that all men are just sort of like one step away from sexually harassing women. I, I'm just not, but there is some learning, right? So they've been, there's a learning journey, um, for men over the last uh, 30, 40 years. Um, and, and I think that that's been helpful, but also, um, there's also this sort of, um, lens that I think everyone's um wearing where a fear there's a fear like everyone's kind of looking for the is that person saying something like that to me because i'm a woman is that because it was that a sexual thing or not um and so people need to get a bit educated um, um in terms of how to how to approach these topics like when someone starts bringing says an inappropriate comment uh, how, how do i actually respond to that in a way that's going to be productive where that yeah. person can have an opportunity to learn and I also can not get offended. Um, Cause then if, if, if they're not learning and you're offended, well, nobody wins out of, out of that scenario. So I and, see a lot of, yeah. sorry, Karen. No, that's, I just see a lot of that happening. Um, and that's, there's also like this confidence thing. Cause sometimes I'll, I'll get women saying, okay, Bobby, you're really confident and I'm not. So I can't just, speak out i can't just um do that and then that's um that that's troubling also that that we need to get women to be more confident um and have have that um that freedom like when you own your body that's that's one of the things i talk about when you own your body um then you you have the liberty you have the right to say to say what you think and say how you feel um and i think this is a place that that we need to get to What's that? Because when you talk about like sexual intelligence, what ex explain what it is? Because obviously there's this the difference, you know, education and intelligence is people often, you know, just think that if you call someone intelligent, it's because they're, you know, they're well educated, they've been to uni and and then there's they, you know, there's people have been speaking about emotional intelligence. And um 
So what is what sexual intelligence is in kind of with the realm of intelligence sort of in the mix? And do you think that's the next step on now in what people should be looking at and understanding? So I, I'm building off of two um, frameworks that are already exist. So, you know, Daniel Goldman's emotional intelligence. So when, when, you know, it's, it's a term now that we're um, familiar and comfortable with where it's really just a framework of concepts um, that, that, that you can think about and try to um, use to sell, to pr improve yourself and to interact with the world and sort of how do you get the best out of yourself and the best out of people. Um, and then there's also Marty Klein who, also wrote a book called Sexual Intelligence, but his is um, designed for the bedroom. Um, and so, um, you know, his his theory is about you being educated about sex and about your body and being able to communicate and all of that. And so I just kind of smashed those two up, um, plus, you know, all of my other observations and thoughts um, and stories I've heard from people to come up with this framework so that we can take the, the the concepts of emotional intelligence and the concepts of sexual intelligence and sort of put them together um, because the, um, and then we have a framework where we can approach things. So that's really sexual intelligence in business is is a framework um, with eight concepts um, that that people can use in, in order to help um, get themselves to that, to that place where they can be successful in their business um, and be comfortable in, in work environments without compromising um, their sexual expression. Yeah. And then the um, the A thing, like consent, and I've got the thing, you know, about consent and respect, and I think it should be more in sex ed at grassroots level to get, just to change the narrative and that, um, the reprogramming. Um, but you talk about it as, a, as sort of the first one of your eight, the eight steps, and actually someone has asked, um, how does a man talk freely without being sexual harassment from the get-go? Um, and on that it's sort of that consent and how yeah, what, what's your advice on that because it's a, it is a minefield because what wouldn't sort of you and me would probably brush off and not really think about with some comments might seriously offend someone and they don't know how to react to it and re respond to it it's sort of that there's that whole thing of like you know just everyone gets offended by everything <laughs> at the moment um, yeah 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 it's definitely um, a landmine. Um, so you kind of have to think about it like this, uh, you know, sexual expression or uh, speaking freely or the same with um, where sometimes people think about um, political correctness versus I should be able to say anything I want to anyone at any time, free speech. Um, there's something nice in the middle there, um, but it does start with respect um, and empathy. And so what that means is, um, you also first have to sort of read the room. Like you do have to put it in a little effort. You can't just say whatever you want to anyone at any time. You have to think about what's the context of my conversation? Who is this person? Have I taken a few minutes to observe and ask questions about the type of person that they are um, and, and what are their sort of levels? Um, and so that's where the respect comes in. So you have to figure out first, um, what is this person like? Um, what is their boundaries? Um, and respect those. Um, and then you have to sort of just engage in some conversation. So you get to know people before you, you just can't go up to a stranger and start, you know, unleashing. I mean, I mean, unless you're in the club and you're doing whatever, but in the work environment, you do need to take a few moments to read the room and figure it out. Um, and then once you understand people's boundaries, then you'll know what you can say and what you can't say. Um, in short order, it just, it takes effort. Um, you do have to, put in a little bit of effort and there's no one, two, three, if I do this, this, and this, this is going to work for everybody. It doesn't, it, it's customized. Um, and, but that's how you're going to get the best out of people. And on the, um, and on that, how can you use that? I mean, you talk a lot about, you know, and using sort of sexual intelligence to enhance, to enhance your career and sort of, you know, make it, make it to the head of the table and in, in the boardroom. And um, what, yeah, what sort of the takeaway, because I mean, I, people should just get the book. Um, and, and read it in, in detail, but sort of just just the takeaways, the things that jump out um, in, in your mind is like the main things that's of being able to use it and the advice and the techniques to do it. Like for example, it is when you are in your environment and reading the room and getting to know people. Um, like for me, it doesn't take too long to figure out that you can say sex jokes to me. Like I'm, the, my offense level is pretty like tolerant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can, we can have um, conversations, but not everybody's comfortable with that. But once you've reached that point, um, I mean, also you do have to 
um, on the other side, the receiver, if you should say, anybody, you have to communicate to people also what are your boundaries. You can't keep those secrets. Um, you need to make that public um, so that people know where they can go and what they can say and do. Um, and that goes for both sides, uh, men and women. Um, as far as capitalizing on um, the sexual energy, um, one of the key factors obviously is um, when you have a crush on someone, when you like someone, when you're in love with someone, when you're having sex with someone, um, or self-love, you don't need another someone, you could, or you could have many someone. It doesn't really <laughs> even matter. You can, you, your body generates um, a, a, an energy and this can be channeled into your business. And so um, when you think about um, things like, um, so there's some con the concept called flow, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but um, it's something that um, um, Stephen Kotler writes a lot about. He's read, he's written um, tons of books about it. I highly recommend people reading them. Um, but it's actually from a researcher, um, uh, a, hang a Hungarian researcher who came up with this idea of flow, uh, Mihaly uh, Csikszentmihalyi. Uh, he has a very complicated uh, yeah, last I'm name. Gonna, but, I'm not going to try and say that one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, we'll pop, pop it in the chat later or something. But um, so he came up with this idea that it's like runner's high. People who are extreme athletes, um, it's a state of mind. It's an altered state of mind that you can get into that um, helps you basically um, learn faster, um, be more productive, more creative. Some people credit it for like genius ideas when they got into a flow state. Um, it's it's a lot of brain chemistry that you're enacting um, through different triggers, like um, um, hyper-focused, sort of high-risk activity. Um, um, when you spend a certain amount of time, like really focused on something, usually 40 minutes is about the is about the sweet spot where you sort of kick in. Um, people call it runner's high too. That's probably the most common way that people think about it, where you, your body starts to react to the things, the chemicals that are producing in your mind based on these activities. Um, sex is a flow trigger. Um, and so when you are having these emotions, they're the, the same brain chemistry um, as, as runner's high. And um, they use actually these techniques to like train the Navy, um, people can pick up a language in six weeks instead of six months. Um, and so there's a lot of benefits to the sexual energy. There's some people in the past who have spoken about it before. Um, but this is, this is, this is the key. Um, and so when you have these, I'm not saying like, go, you know, get it on. And then, and then suddenly like run to your computer quick, uh, <laughs> before it goes away. But, um, nonetheless, when you have sort of this going on in your life and you're sort of, um, continually doing this, then you will notice, um, that you can channel this into your productivity. And so that, that's the key. I mean, I can speak for, yeah. I, I can speak from personal experience that this is, this has been key for me. Yeah. Do you know, it's funny because it kind of, we joke, it's like you can get a really uptight person and someone behaving a certain way and like, and I've always gone, oh, they they need a good shag, or they need and they need they need to go, you know, have yeah. a wank. But actually, yeah. it's just, a, just joking, you know, it's joking around. But there is proper science in in that that release yes. and that, that feel good to actually then and put it into you know in into the workspace, so you're not all pent up and being an arsehole or a bitch yeah. or you know so. Um, I mean, there's also tons of other health benefits you get from having sex and, and channeling sexual energy. Like it's anti-aging, it's it helps fight disease. Like, I mean, in I have a whole chapter on it, it lists like all these amazing benefits that you get, plus the productivity, the creativity. Like it 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 actually helps your brain um operate better. You know what? There's just gonna be a whole lot of people wanking in their in their in in, in their office <laughs> in the, toilet. In their office already, right? <laughs> Exactly. Just gonna uh, yeah, just gonna go and release the brain into like productivity. Instead of a meditation room, like you need a wank room or something. Right? I'll just be this masturbation room with amazing sounds and lights and um, <laughs> the dream. Um, but on the um, where do you think they, they? You know, there's a huge taboo about leaving it in, just leaving it in the bedroom. You know what I mean? Kind of leaving when you come out of the bedroom, you can't leave your house. And obviously, you know, the Victorian era of sort of um yeah very sort of pent up and keeping it in the bedroom that will don't disturb the horses um mm -hmm. um where do you think do you think a lot of the the taboo around especially for women about uh, you know be that on the sexuality side of things is just real inbuilt in our dna in our bones in the messaging and um where do you think a lot of it comes from 
the whole taboo around it all? Yeah, I mean, it's a mix of factors. Um, there are tons of biologists that um, that state about different um, capacities or, or inclinations, natural instincts and inclinations um, towards, um, you know, how men and women approach um, sex differently. Um, but, you know, that's not the entirely um, deciding factor. Society has um, a huge... Um, a huge uh, influence there as well. Um, and you, you can see when you study um, cross cultures, um, how that makes a big difference. And yeah, it does, we're, we're still sort of, um, um, there's a carryover from, yeah, when we converted to industrialization and trying to keep people more productive. Um, and so keep sex off the mind and, you know, with, with you know, some of the, the religious philosophies you know, if you convert that into something that's not a good thing to do or should only be done here and there. Um, there's also great debate about whether or not humans are actually monogamous or or should be monogamous or just serial monogamy, not one person for their whole life. And statistics also show that that's um, maybe not exactly how things should go for everyone. Um, and so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of societal um um, social construction out there that tell messaging from early from day one that tell women to you know be like this and men to be like that and so some of them some of that can be reversed um and and not just over generations but literally you can just change your mind about things um that is definitely a possibility so yeah i definitely encourage people to think differently about that but um it's it's funny because there are people who say that sex is taboo um, and then there's others that are like, it, it's actually not. Um, it's really just everywhere and constantly talked about, which is a really interesting um, um, oxymoron. It's like, this is, we, we both, we all say the sex is taboo and yet we're just con like it's everywhere. It's yeah. on TV, it's in the magazines, it's in all the song lyrics. Like, I mean, especially in weird countries, um, the, the Western countries, it's, it's, it's in the clothes that we buy. It's, it's everywhere. There, there is no place you can go now without interacting um, with sex, which is why this whole like let's get it out of the professional workplace is somewhat of a ridiculous concept. Yeah, because that's the thing I always say. It, you know, our, it, our sexuality and it drives us. It's our core. It's it's who we are um, as people. So kind of trying to squash. It's like squashing your identity. Why would anyone want to squash yeah. their identity or not work on their identity? As in not in the same way you work on your well-being and your fitness and um, mm -hmm. you know your health in general why would you not want to work on that you know the sexual yeah exactly um, and I, I think that this is a this is a concept too where people don't respect that if you are sexually intelligent or you 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 own your sexual and you're authentic about it, this is somehow not a respected characteristic um which i think it should be up there with the level of people who are inventors and artists and you know um sports olympians this is something um this is something that is an achievable benchmark of of a great characteristic of a person yeah and on the um do you, on the, the sort of the patriarchy um side of things because obviously the workplace is and still is it's you know it's a very patriarchal setup um and the and the, you know the irony is and you speak about it and i've you know sort of a, is that you know, men are seen as, as they're the more powerful ones. They they have the power and the money and that on that side, but yet they can't control themselves when it comes to women. They are they and and on the other side, you know, you have the women who are seen as sort of the weaker needing looking after um gender. Um and yet they apparently have the power to seduce men. It's a real kind of old you know old school kind of juncture uh, um kind of we need you know men need to be protected from us because we are literally going to seduce and manipulate the hell out of any man that comes near us apparently yeah <laughs> this is yeah this is also a complicated um topic because power um sort of has different manifestations right so right now in in the patriarchal system men are in positions of power, i.e. a decision-making places. That doesn't necessarily mean they actually have real power. It's just that they're sitting in places um, of power. Um, and then there's also 
um, when you think about power as an energy that moves. Um, and, and so that's a different thing where women's like, well, I don't have power, meaning I don't have decision making ability, but you actually do have power. There's power that is the energy that you can tap into. That is something that, um, you can have power over yourself and power over other people, um, or together with people, not over people, but, um, that you can, that you can utilize, um, that is a, an energy flow, um, and so it's it's a it's a different type of power source that even though you're not necessarily in a decision making position, you are an influential person, um, and that can give you um, the pathway um, that you need up until you know more more there's more balance up in decision making levels, um, and then there's also um, like you said there's this conundrum where it's like well if I if I have so much power to manipulate and yet men um, you know. So are they threatened or not? Um, do I have power or not? Um, and that's because there's different forms of power, you could say both yes and no. Um, but that also means that there's alternate routes. Like you don't always have to, it's kind of like, you know, how you how you think about lighting and energy and the sun. There's different ways that power sort of transmits uh, throughout the world because we are part of, um, you know, a global eco ecology system. Um, and so, Yes, there is this whole like we must protect or protect the men from the manipulative sexual. Mm. This like really, really bugs me. Um, this one, um, but then I'm just curious if that is the case. Then why why women don't use that? Then if you feel like you are powerless, but yet you have this power, then yeah. what is stopping you from doing that? Yeah, no, I remember saying it when I, you know, I started KK when I was 15 years ago. And I remember before that NPR and I worked in the city of it. And I said, you know, I said, I don't get the whole women trying to act like men and be more man and wanting to be a man type thing to get by. And I remember saying then the most powerful person in the city is a female that knows how to use their sexuality and femininity in an intelligent way. And it was kind of, I remember, it's funny, it's all coming around now because I remember it was my always my big argument point with people um and girls just behaving like dickheads um you know more kind of because that's what they thought they had to be more you know more like a man to fit yeah. in in a man's world and um and i remember going no it's not um it's kind of one sort of thing that I had in my head to start kk there was it was always there that no actually um um but do you think on 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 that i've encountered a lot of actually that internal misogynism within a lot of women um to that they just they don't want to they just like the status quo they don't want to challenge it they like it as it is so it kind of to me it's sort of that's just continuing to enable the patriarchy um yes by yeah. not yeah so but there's a whole generation of of women that um their whole view on i guess some uh feminist or women's movements women's initiatives that are like you know have really um stormed in the last 10 years they're like listen what I did is I just, I did my work. I put my nose down, I sucked it up and I got it done. Um, and, and I don't want to be a part of, you know, any of, any of this stuff because I think it's bullshit and, you know, the younger generation are just whining and, um, <laughs> about, you know, wanting this and that. And, um, and, and so there's like, yeah, they just did what they needed to do to get the job done. Um, and, and there's a certain kind of survival element of that. It's like, you know, sometimes you do have to do that depending on the situation. Um, but at the same time, um, also not every, not every man or a woman wants, it certainly identifies with being feminine or masculine in the yeah. ways that most people understand that what that might look like. Um, so if a woman happens to act more like a man, it might be because that's, she's comfortable to do that. Um, and vice versa. Um, and so that that's also fine. It's it's kind of like the idea is to take a framework that works for you and and customize it so that you're getting the best out of yourself, whatever that looks like. Um, and if that means that you are so it's a hyper feminine, um, then great. Then go ahead and do that. And um, we do. There is a bit of a judgy ness going on with women. It's like if if you. I mean, I know I get it. Um, I, I get it, like literally get the looks from the women, like, okay, um, you know, you're too, you're wearing too, like, I don't wear revealing clothes, but they're like, well, you look too sexy or, you know, you're oh, yeah. going to ruin it for the women who are trying to really, 
um, you know, get, I don't want to be looked at because um, I look good or beautiful. I want to be taken seriously. Um, and my response to that is like, girl, fuck, I'm getting taken seriously. Believe me. Like people <laughs> listen, they are, they're hearing my ideas. I speak up in the boardroom. Um, there is nobody not taking me seriously. So I don't know that it has as much to do with how you look or how people look at you as opposed to how you can see yourself and how, how you, how you act and your behaviors and your philosophies. To me, this is, this, this commands um, more respect from people. Um, and so it's kind of like just whatever tools in the toolbox you have, like if you find that wearing a height, like Bebra, um, what is her name? Um, Barbara Corrigan, she's this, uh, she's a woman from Shark Tank in the US and she's, she's a su successful businesswoman. And she, she said that, um, you know, when she walks into a room full of men, if she's wearing a nice colored suit and some high heels, everybody looks at her and she gets attention. And if that's what it takes to get your foot in the door so that then you can start talking about your ideas and your business and, you know, all, all of the great things that you have in your brain and in your head, because at the end of the day, looks will only get you so far you still have to deliver yeah it's the base oh i so you know it's backing yourself it's going in um and um a girl over here she's well known like sports um presenter and personal trainer and she's married to one of the england rugby players and she she had one of the things that stood out for her when she suddenly got in the head was they go in and they you know into the changing room before a game and they're like just back yourself if someone's whining a bit just back and she said it the guys do it it's uh default and so when she started saying that to herself and walking into places she's going Fucking back yourself it sort of it changed the voice in her head and she was like yeah i know my stuff um just yeah get out there and back yourself on on it all and um and that but that's another thing on the girl front isn't it is that i mean i've been accused of being obnoxious and opinionated and aggressive all my life but i'm like whatever <laughs> yeah. it, took, it took me into my 30s to kind of actually not to in my head not go oh god are people think i'm too opinionated and having that kind of i should be more fem feminine i should be you know sort of know your place of it it's just but that's that messaging isn't it that you just have in you that you just sort of i just bitch slap it away now <laughs> yeah sort of, that's it like there uh -huh. i'm sure that there there will be some uh groups that of women that really don't like what I, the book is all about what what i'm saying they're like you're going to ruin oh yeah they'll hate you they will hate yeah, you yeah. Going to hell. yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> i'll be there i'll be there with a lot of wine so don't worry <laughs> but i i still think it's important that we talk about it at least um so i i'm okay with people opposing um and challenging um what i'm putting out there the, the idea is to get a different conversation going because from the me too narrative as it stands we are very much like don't criticize anything um because if you do then you're anti-feminist and you know, pro-sexual harassment, which obviously is not the case. Like nobody is wanting any of that. Um, but the conversation needs to get had because now things just have gone a bit sideways, I think. Yeah. And you're like me, I think, and the, I, I just see humans, if that makes sense. And I just think we're in it together and we need to, the best teams and the best relationships come from not being in an echo chamber and actually being in this massively cognitive diverse setup of all genders and races and, cultures um and that's the best place in the work environment so it's you know it's i think that whole us and them thing i've always i've always hated that and the labels and um mm -hmm. that go with it um but what for people um yeah buying your book which they will um on and um what 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 will people get out of it like what's the aim of having when you did it what did you want people to sort of walk away with after well, for, for men, I want them um, to learn a little bit about the women's movements and, and the sexual revolution. So they get a bit of context of like, okay, how do we get here? Um, and also, um, you know, for them as well to give them a framework on how to operate um, because it does go both ways. Like if, if this, it can't be just for women, men have to do this too, right? So everyone's got to do it. Um, and so, so that they, they understand what does consent mean? Um, and what, how can I, how can I continue sort of to be my authentic self? Um, and as well, I'm also addressing, um, um, for some men that there are identity issues going on right now. There's an identity crisis. 
um, um, and that that we need to be cognizant of that. That you know, you the this breadwinner power position is 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 uh, of your and uh, being hyper masculine um, is is fading. You know, it's we it's okay that you are a stay at home dad. It's okay that you are um, that that you're more emotional than than your other you know uh, male counterparts. Um, you know that there's an identity issue going on, and I want to address that um, and and let let men know that not all women think that they're assholes um yeah. that there's some some there's some space for you here to develop as well um but the key the key the key thing from the book is really to um get more people um especially women um okay with their sexuality okay with your sexual energy and use it use it if you got it flaunt it like if you got it work it whatever you need to figure out how to get get okay with that um, and I hope that the, the book can help people to do that. And finally, just for anyone, and men and women, um, just starting out, like we've got a lot of members who are kind of early 20s. And I remember what I was like early 20s and sort of really nervous in the workplace and um, on that front. And what, so what, what sort of a little bit of advice on them kind of starting out in the work, in the work world now and, yeah, worrying about that minefield? Well, yeah. So like workplace culture right now is, is probably one of the number one factors that retain employees and make people happy workers. Um, and so it, it's important that um, people choose positions and, and um, corporations and places, workplaces that have a culture that you're comfortable with. Um, and, and what that means is a respectful environment, um, open communication, where if somebody does um, cross a line that there's an avenue uh, for you to pursue that. But that doesn't mean that you need to be like, um, like, a, like cautious about that every single day. Is somebody going to say something to me and, and, and whatever. So I think that there's, we have to sort of relax a little bit and bring back the pendulum into kind of the middle ground where it's okay um, that we have relationships. It's okay that you might meet somewhere at the workplace. It's okay that um, you can be who you are. Um, be more authentic um, and embrace. Like what we don't want people is to carry over um, now the new generation of people and continue on these social constructions um, um, and and bring that with them. Um, and so there's this, but there's also this own your body. This is very important that when you own your body and you make decisions for your body in a very intentional way of where you go and who you give it to and how you talk about it and how you present it. Um, this is all within your power, and you should. You should utilize that to the maximum, meaning if you want to wear a suit and you're buttoned up and, and you show no skin or um, you want to wear, um, you know, if you want to wear your hijab or he, like kneecap, whatever it is that you want to do with your body, do it with intention um, and and but respecting other people, too. Um, and so there's this don't, you know, don't judge others. I mean, these are like basic concepts, right? Like yeah, that, that sound all very concept. like obvious, but they're not penetrating for some reason. Yeah. Um, and finally, for um, before we finish, what's been your, because you've lived through it all, you know, you've lived it and you've had a really diverse um, career background and different degrees and experienced it all. What's been, and your mum, and what's been your um, sort of the biggest lesson you've learned like along the way just what what's been sort of the thing or one of the things the biggest thing say what you think and say what you mean and mean what you say um this is the biggest thing and and so when you do that then people um know what you really think you express your ideas you'll learn if you're wrong um and then you you've uh, you've established boundaries people know how to treat you um, and so when you are really, um, I mean, there's maybe something you have to go back and self-reflect if, if the things that you have to say are things that you don't think you should say, um, then you might want to go back and reflect on that. Um, but for the most part, most people are decent human beings. And so, um, you should be able to express your ideas and your thoughts, um, in, in a respectful way, in a productive way, um, wherever you go and in every relationship that you have. Oh, perfect. Own your voice, doesn't it? And your body. Yeah. <laughs> Own your voice and your body. Um, so we will end there. Thank you. But that, yeah, 
there's the book. Um, the link, so the link will be attached to the videos. It'll stay up. So, um, but Lovely. it's fascinating. So, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you. It has been a pleasure.